All right, let's talk about the Battle Dome. So recently, we all know TNT got a new CEO. They got new stuff going on, and there has been a lot of hype about the Battle Dome till we got strapped in and told that nothing's going on right now. And a lot of people have been putting a lot of weight on this. Uh, they have an internal deadline, and they're teasing an upcoming plot. Given their latest thing was delayed, I think, two weeks. Doesn't quite inspire hope, but if you're a player like me, you get the you get the basic structure of the Battle Dome. Like, you train your pet, give it items, battle monsters, creatures, and get rewards. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but I don't know anything really beyond that, so... I guess today is the goodest time as any to learn some more or, you know, start training for the future potential quest line or battle thing. From what I understand, people expect it to be kind of like a linear quest line where you're going to have to battle stronger creatures to progress in the plot line. That's why I think people understand it currently. Could be wrong, could be right. I got no idea, but let's look at the battle dome. So first of all, introduction, pretty straightforward. Basically, there's a single player, which is you versus a monster, and then there's two player, which is you against another real human against two pets. I could just show that for a second here. This almost never happens. Like, no one battles anymore in the battle dome that I know of. But you'd click on your friend, you'd battle the capture boss and get it wrong, and then you click it again and get it wrong. And then you click on one of their pets. And then you would just click right here at the challenge button, but I'm not going <laughs> to, I would probably win this fight actually, but yeah, that's how you would do it. But anyways, all right, this just basically says you, you just fight, but all right, first things first, attacking. Everyone knows you got to attack, you got to defend, got to use items. Let's learn more about it. Okay. One of the most important things about the Battle Dome is doing damage. If you can't do damage, you lose. <laughs> it's very straightforward, okay? <clears throat> this is important. Just like Pokemon, there's different kinds of attacks. There's no special critical damage, but when it comes to defending, these icons matter a lot. Seven kinds, just like the fairies, and then physical. Air, earth, dark, light, fire water in case you're wondering why this item went banana sandwich the other day with prices and it dropped back down to the reality last i checked it hit like 40 million it was selling like mad and now you can't even give it away for 30. but because it blocks 75 percent of icons from air which is why it's so expensive but we'll get there yet all right seven kinds of icons okay the more attack icons you can deal the more damage you will inflict very straightforward. Spark Shooter does three icons. Ice Club does nine. We all know the bigger number is nine. And a lot of people, a lot of people, including me, are very confused on how you do more damage. You just kind of just, you just kind of assume if your pet gets stronger, you do more damage. And this is a really important concept to understand for attack and defense. Okay. While the number of damage icons indicates on. Well, the number of icons gives some indication of how much damage you will deal. The amount also takes your pet strength into account, okay? So there's like thresholds or tiers you have to reach, okay? So if you have 11 attack, it's going to drop you down to 8. But as you can see, so this thing does 3 icons. If you have 15 strength or 18 or 13 or 19, you're going to do 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, that same item with 3 icons, if you got up to 15, is going to do 45. Same item, same 3 icons, but because you have 15 strength, it hits that this is the multiplier of damage. All right, obviously that makes fit, but should make some sense. I think it's pretty straightforward. But. So yes, 
your pet doesn't automatically get stronger. You want to hit certain thresholds for attack, same as defense, okay? I think I explained it pretty well how it kind of works. But yes, if you're in the range, it's going to go down to your lowest range. So you don't get any more damage between 500 till you hit 550. Those 50 levels do nothing till you hit 550. It is kind of frustrating, but that's just the tier system they set up, and it's pretty straightforward, okay? Obviously, there's like a fractional thing, like you can see 0.75 times things. But that's all minor details you wouldn't need in a basic understanding, okay? I'm going to move on to a defense now. All right, just double check. Nothing too important that I'm skipping there, at least not in a basic understanding. Defense. If you understand the principles behind attacking, you'll be pleased to know defending works similarly. Similarly, but not exactly, okay? So, as a weapons deal icons of damage, defensive weapons block certain types and amounts of icons. The icons are the same ones mentioned in the attack. Which icons, how many can be blocked, varies from weapons, okay? So, this is really important. A leaf shield blocks five icons of earth, water, and three physical, okay? We understand that. And same like defense or attack, at a certain level in your pet, it can block that much, okay? So if we scroll down here, it gives an example, okay? And I mean, this person made a guide. I should probably just read it <laughs> word for word and not get too convoluted, okay? It's important to remember different types of defense icons are not interchangeable. This leaf shield blocks earth, water, physical. Nothing about dark, nothing about air, just those specific icons. And your opponent attacks with weapons that deal air. Your shield will block none of it. It doesn't, it'll offend you zero for that. The amount of damage your pet receives cannot be lower than zero. If your defense blocks more damage than your opponent can deal, you just take zero. It's not like you like can heal from blocking damage or like return it for some magical way. Yeah, I mean, yes, but no. So fractional defense icons, weapons block less than displayed. Yeah, so like in case you actually read the actual chat in the battle dome, it, it's not like literally perfect, okay? So a calculation. My pet has a defense of 60. Okay, 60 falls in the two damage area. My opponent deals five points, not icons of fire damage, five points of earth damage, and five of water. Okay, so calculation, 60 falls into this boost right here, which is two, meaning that each icon blocks two damage. That means my leaf shield can block 10 points of earth, 10 points of water and 6 of physical because remember up here it said it has 5 earth, water and this. So if you had 700 it would do 3 times 5 is 45 and 15 times 5 I think it's like 105. So it scales as you get stronger obviously. And it, it just absorbs that much damage. It doesn't absorb the actual icons. It just it, it can absorb that much damage in total. All right, so it can protect you at that defense for 10, 10, and 6. All right, of the 5 points of earth damage from my opponent, my shield blocks 10, meaning I get no earth damage. Of the 15 water, my shield blocks 10. 15 minus 10 is 5 damage I take. Finally, my leaf shield cannot block fire at all, means I take that all. So defending is kind of more of a complex next level strategy because a lot of people do is they kind of cheese where you're going to try to freeze your opponent and just smack him with weapons and worry about defending if you can't just one, two shot them. But we're going to keep on going there. So once again, so zero plus five plus five plus 10. And yeah, so quite often, usually attacking kind of, usually if you're going to have any kind of defensive fight, we want, we want to attack. So if you look at this uh, extra loud megaphone, it's dealing 15 icons plus blocking air. 
And just to give you this little quick little idea of what's going on, let's just take a current Cosmic Dome Jetson Mace. So you look at his, this item here. When they attack you, it has two icons of these, all right? And 100% freeze. That's what it looks like. So yes, you could you could cal like you could see what icons your opponent's gonna use on you. So this weapon here, if they use it, if you're gonna have a defensive item, you're gonna want to use earth and light to potentially block that. So you, you could see this is a very well rounded well rounded pet because it's obviously for nerk mids. But yeah. So if you actually could do your research for your actual opponent, you could just kind of see. Okay, this guy has fire, earth. And I think that's dark. So yeah, you can kind of get a pretty good idea of what you want to get going on if you want to actually play a defensive strategy. But usually people just want to kick in the front door and just smack them in the face. All right, abilities. All right, there's a much bigger page for this. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but as a guide, they just tell you what to click. All right. Level one, not really important. So your pet's level is important also outside of just your pet being trained or at doubloons or nerk, not nerk mids, code stones. But this is, if you're a new player and you want to get premium to get nerk bits from the Jets and Mace, once you get level 50 and get lens flare, if you can't beat Jets and Mace, you're, <laughs> you've done something wrong. You got 50, level 50, you have some decent HP, like 80 HP and some strength. Yeah, you have you have no problem beating Jets and Mace. But there is an in-depth you want to look here, okay? So this adds a few icons. Okay, one turn to activate when it deals four icons the next round, okay? Halitosis. Attack is dealt for two consecutive, so it's two icons. Obviously, you know how your strength scales now. So this one of the effect heals your pet a few be heals your heal yourself for a few hit points every little bit helps okay side effects mummyism all right once again healing here four HP unused four HP falling round only works if you move first so there's a bunch of conditions to learn here and you can go through them but there's a pretty obvious clear tier list five percent of your HP but the important one here, obviously the higher up. So lens flare prevents your opponent from using weapons on the next round. So if you go first, I mean, if you're a single player, you smack this, they can't do nothing. Let me just show you that actually. It is the most broken thing in the world. Okay, here's my Shoiru. I'll just do it on easy just to get so like if I don't use that ability and let's just let's just say I do that he will use his abilities that's we saw that with the mummyism one you can see he blocked three what is that three earth one air and I blocked with my weapon two light oh just show the icons earth what air okay yeah so he blocked seven total tiles, or is that three times three? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he he blocked four, five, six, seven. Okay, and I'll just fight him here one more time. Bang! I shot him. But once again, I took damage here. So I smacked him with all those icons, all the icons back here. Collect my rewards. Of course, I don't get anything. But now when I use lens flare, if it doesn't crash my browser. Now when I use Len Flare, he will not even have a chance to fight back. I'll hit this and I'll just one shot him. Yeah, get wrecked. Don't need to block. Don't need to do anything else. Oh, I couldn't hold on fast enough to see it. But yeah, he didn't, he didn't do nothing. Let's just show it one more time. I want to be a little more clear while I'm here. So because I use this, this is, what, this is what he was going to use. He was also going to lens flare me back. <laughs> but because I went first a single player, I don't think speed is anything, but we'll find out later. But yeah, so I dealt all these icons, which ended up being 104 damage. You can do the math there to guess my strength. But pretty straightforward. There's a lot of super broken skills. 
my pets only level that. So if we went back here, level 100, Burrow, okay? It's by Festa, our best choice here. Rejuvenate, right here. So let's go level 400, Reflect. Let's take a peek at that. Politely decline, okay. Reflects 66% of damage taken back to your opponent. That is crazy. To deal back two thirds, And max level is 500. Really cool. Summon Monoceraptor. 16 damage per icon. So it's kind of set. He would say are worth missing. <laughs> There's legacy stuff. So if you played back in the, you know, long, long before time, there are different abilities. But it got, you can just see these icons were part of your childhood when things were fun, nonchalant. The people who played the game also did the i like the people who played the game loved the game created the game updated the game you can just tell like you just you can't teach this very cool but irrelevant to what we're doing here today by the way shout out to sir cabbage here who wrote this article all right obviously we care about attacking defending now we care a lot about the next three things healing freezing reflecting they sound exactly like you would imagine. Healing, freezing, reflecting, okay? Obviously, you have hit points. Once you hit zero, you lose. Obviously, you play Pokemon as a kid. You hit zero, you faint, you wake up at an end. All right? All right, it's telling here that if you've lost a battle, you have to heal <laughs> to fight again. Obviously, there's items to heal, but here we go. There's two categories of healers normal and over healers these are very important concepts to get okay my pet is in the middle of the battle though match he's taking some damage now at 25 out of 50 hp i decide to use an item that will heal 30 hp if i use a greater healing scroll which is a regular healing item my pet returns to 50 out of 50 because the scroll cannot cause him to go over his maximum hit points. So obviously, you know, 25 plus 30 is 55, but it can't overheal. It can only heal max 30. All right. If I put an attacks at same turn, I will take 10. 50 minus 10 equals 40. Hopefully, you have a pretty good guess of what an overheal item is going to do and why it's special. All right. So if you use a blue scorch stone, which is an overhealer, my pet will go up 25 plus 30, which will be 55 for that turn only. So if my opponent then attacks him on that turn and causes 10 damage, it's 55 minus 10, so I will have 45. So yes, overhealing pushes through your limit on that one turn. So if you could take that, if you take any damage, it'll subtract from that completely higher number. All right. Even if an overheal pet is not attacked, any hit points they gain will last for the rest of the turn. At the end of the turn, she will return to the maximum HP. There is no way to make overhealed hit points permanent. Some well-known regular healers include Greater Healing, the Jade Scorch Stone, the Letter Vial. Well-known overhealers include Scorch Stones and the Everlasting Crystal Apple. Let's look at that for a quick second. All right, well, we're here. How do you make it? Everlasting Apple and Judora's Crystal Ball. Bang, make the item here, okay? Effects, 30 HP. List all your opponents. Interesting. All right, well, I thought for that price it was gonna be a little more uh, interesting, but I guess we'll look at some Scorch Stones for a hot second because that's what most people use. That's what I use. Let's see if it's going to show on here. So over here, this is like this. I think it's like one of the holy grail items of the game. If you have, if you backward in the two versus two battle, two versus two or two player battle fighting back or whatever it's going to call it. Okay. I don't know too much, but I'm trying to <laughs> learn more about this one. The Jade, 100% heal once per battle, which is crazy. 
Rainbow overheal 80. So if you're like me and you just want to get Nurk mids, this is super good. Obviously, if your pet has like 4,000 hit points, 100% heal on like a regular item is why overheals aren't that important. Early on, early on, super effective, super strong. Two versus, or I guess player versus player, super strong as well. But once your pet gets over at like 500 hit points, not doing much here. Silver's pretty trash. All right, <clears throat> now freezing. Okay. It has nothing to do with accounts being frozen. All right. A frozen pet in the battle dome is unable to do anything for one turn. No abilities, no weapons. But you're only allowed one freezing item as part of your pet's equipment of eight. I think you can get a ninth if you do the obelisk and you pick the certain thing, but that's kind of super niche for this current time. Freezing is obviously broken as shit. <laughs> All right, there is three kinds of freezers. It reminds you of Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. All right. So there's non freezers, non guaranteed. So it's like a non guaranteed, hundred percent freezer, multi freezer. And like it says, like it's like, like you would assume intuitively, not a guarantee. Guaranteed can be used more than once in a fight. So super broken. Okay. Like the. Black Frost Cannon, which is not guaranteed to freeze your opponent. They have a certain chance. Once you have managed to freeze your opponent, they cannot be used again. So let's take a little hot second here to look at this Black Frost Cannon. A 20% chance, and it's semi-fragile. We'll talk about fragile later, I'm guessing. All right. So usually quite cheap. You can probably search freeze freezers here, but okay. So this H400 helmet always freezes when used. Mostly common use freezer, okay? Most people are willing to spend their turns to freeze the item unless it's sure to work. I mean, that obviously makes sense. In player versus player, most players use their freezer on their first turn. In many situations, being vulnerable for the first turn can lead... Yeah, if you get if you just get smacked by their two best weapons, then they're, you're going to lose probably. All right. And now multi freezer. So let's just check out the helmet here because we're on their site and this is a great guide. 100% once per battle, doesn't break. A lot of enemies use it because freezing is a critical component of like then having a chance to fight back. All right. And then on to the top tier multi freezers such as this potion, are able to freeze your opponent multiple times in a single battle. Obviously, best utilized by a strong pet. If frozen in two player for very long, one player into, yeah, so basically it, it, it snowballs. Like once, once you're freezing them, you can keep freezing them. <laughs> so like it, it gets out of hand pretty crazy. It's the same thing like in Pokemon when your opponent is frozen salt, they just they just don't attack back. <laughs> Obviously, it's only a 16% chance, but you're dealing 10 chances here and you can use it constantly. Obviously, I don't think it's like crazy amazing, but that's a 1 in 5? 1 in 6? 1 in 6% six chance, or 1 in 6 to just freeze your opponent. Pretty awesome, pretty cool. All right, reflecting. I wonder what that does. <clears throat> If you feel like giving your opponent a taste of his or her medicine, you've come to the right place. Reflection is a mechanic that allows you to use icons done by your opponent to damage his or her own pet. Reflection is both defensive and offensive, which is obviously the best possible idea in the game for like Battle Dome. You stop some of your opponent's attack icons from hurting you and put it back. It's pretty amazing. Most reflectors, such as several plus, reflect a fixed percentage of a single type of damage. So this reflects 50% of all Earth icons. So icons are super critical, super important. But most people, just because of having to figure out icons and matching, that's crazy though. It has a 1% chance of breaking. <clears throat> 
So if we just went here for a hot second and went to the top weapons. Okay, that, look at this, blocks 100% that, heals you half. Look at this one here, Wand of the Dark Fairy, reflects 75%, that's air, and heals you when you have less than a quarter health. Once again, reflect. Obviously, that's why they're given a high number. Blaze, yep. Blocking two thirds, two thirds, and dealing how many icons? At least 10. Pretty awesome. We all this item. Dealing 25 icons for like two, two and a half million. Very strong. Amazing. Sort of lameness. Chance, a multi use chance to freeze. This is something that I know. Lenny, Ray Gunner freezing. Do you have to be a Lenny to use this? I'm pretty certain some items are only usable by certain th pets, and I'm pretty sure this is one of them. Oh yeah, so it's a non-species freezer, okay. Which means I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. Alright, item types. Okay, here we go. Last but not least, there's different types, okay? Pretty straightforward. Multi, multiple use, sorry. Can be used every turn. Multiple use attack, often known as constants, form the major part of most player strategy. All right, so it means you can use it multiple times in one battle, all right? Then there's once per battle, means once you use it in that battle, you can't get it back. Mm-hmm, bombs. And then one one use items are that it's one and done, like a snowball as a kid or a muffin. I didn't learn about multi use till later, because <laughs> I was a poor kid. I was doing Talia's quest, Talia's quest, and that was pretty straightforward. All right, and then here it gets a little interesting. So reliability, basically, chance to break. Fragile items have a chance of breaking. Permanently means they're gone forever. There's no way to make them less likely to break. It's just a chance. It just rolls a number. Semi-fragile, also breakable. When they break, they don't vanish forever. However, like once per battle items, they disappear until the end of the current fight. Okay? Fragile, gone forever. One use, gone forever. Semi-fragile, once they break, they come back later in your inventory. Same thing at once per battle. The next battle comes back for you to use. So kind of the same concept, but kind of different. If you enter a different battle later, you'll be able to use the item again. Straightforward. And I think that's a pretty good introduction, 28 minutes. Do we talk about training your pet today or in a different guide? Let's just take a little peek. How long is the guide gonna be? I think we'll talk about it. It just looks like a little pit, yeah. Let's keep going. A beginner's guide to training, who let's give by Macostin. 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 September two years ago. Alright. Let's learn how to train your pet. This guide is meant to demystify or demystify training, provide a sample of a basic roadmap. Stats. We got a pretty good idea of how stats work now, hopefully. It just skips speed. You don't care about speed. If <laughs> People have flirted with the idea that in the future speed's going to be relevant or important. Or like it's like Pokemon where the fast one should attack first. But that just never happened in the game. And I'm guessing they would have announced if it was going to be important later. Or I guess it will be updated if it's going to be. <clears throat> Alright. Level. Level is useful primarily for two things. Training, further stats, and unlocking abilities. We saw abilities. Alright. I should show you how to actually use this actually. Hold on a second. Alright. Here we are at the page I was at before in the article guide. Just on the fairy ability page. Just click there. 
And at any given point, so I'm level 100, so you can see, you could always at some point change your abilities. Basically, all you would do is you would get those fairies, those bottle fairies. Bottle, not the retired ones. Oh, it's going to be hard to find. Uh, give me a second. All right, pretty straightforward. You would see what it costs. Those solar flare cost light. You just basically buy the corresponding fairy. I have a few from the Battle Dome or various other things. So you would buy them. You would click on them and go, okay, bless my pet. Now it's given me one fire point. So you have to use multiple to get the, the threshold. The old abilities corresponded to this system. These the fading ones are retired, no good, no use, old battle dome. Weak fairies, current system. Those are what work. And then like if you're like me and you messed up and you wanted to use you learned the wrong ability, you just click the thing and let's hit train and it just saves over top of it. So if you made a mistake in the past, no problem. Come back here, we can figure it out, no problem. <clears throat> All right. Levels do not inherently impact your pet's performance in battle in any way other than abilities. For example, a pet with 750 strength at level one does the same, like there's no multiplier involved with level. Very straightforward. All right, HP, a pet with more HP can just take more damage, obviously. Bigger is better, obviously. We all know this deep down in our souls. Strength, the amount of damage your pet does is based on strength. We, basically, we've already seen this right here. Defense, obviously defense is important, but if you can just lens flare and do a one shot like I showed you guys, you don't gotta worry about any of that. All right, agility. So stealing has been broken since 2013, but if it's ever fixed, then this Maybe I'll give a little bit of a bonus taste a little bit later, but basically in like one player battle versus like monsters and creatures, you could steal a weapons opponent and use it. And some of the weapons, especially early on in the game, the icons were ridiculous and their effects were also ridiculous. So stealing was like super awesome. Like if you ever played Final Fantasy or various games like that, RPGs or JRPGs, Stealing, when you could steal good items, is amazing. Granted, those are also permanent in those games, but stealing is a, stealing is a wonderful mechanic. It just it could, be, it could be anything. It's awesome. All right. At that point, you'll need 201 agility to use it. Beyond that, agility is virtually useless. Don't train it unless there's some sort of a requirement for an item. But now on to training. All right. Swash Bucket Academy accepts low denomination to Bloons as payments. The school is slower and cheaper. All right. But at level 40, you can't go there at all anymore. All right. Mystery Island. They use the regular code stones. And then there's red. Just this is regular. That's red. They want to call them tan. But all right. It's faster, but more expensive and only accepts up to 250. In general, you could only train a stat to twice your pet's level, the exception being in this school health is times three. This, that stated rule on the school's course page isn't quite correct. You can actually train your pet's health to thrice its level plus an extra three. That's probably some weird coding. All right. <clears throat> Another quirk with the island school you are still allowed to train your pet's health if its strength and defense are higher than twice its level. This is just kind of like a little higher end stuff here if you're just wanting to, yeah. Just, this is kind of like speed running, like strategy and information, which like super interesting, but if you just want to get your pet strong, it's pretty linear. This is the only school which you cannot cancel lessons. All right, obviously there is the secret ninja training school, which is 250 plus. So once your pet's 250, it's, it's here or a few less options. 
All right. <clears throat> Only takes red codestones. They're given at this battle dome prizes. You can buy them. While you can cancel lessons here, if you cancel a lesson here, you have to wait for 24 before you can sign up. All right. Let me just show how you can just actually use it. As you can see, um, the next video I'm trying to make is uh, in my inventory. <laughs> All right. So Swash Bucket Academy, bang, Academy. So you kind of come here, you're like, what's going on here? You click this, also kind of confused. Click courses, click on one of your pets. So obviously my pets levels are a little high, a little low. And then you say, I want to get a level for my walkie. So now what you would do is you would just if you had premium, you would just go Super Shop Wizard. Hit identical, obviously, because otherwise you get trolled. I'll buy one. I'll buy a two. Wait. I want to show the code still one. Actually, I, I with my short route. Perfect. Doesn't matter. Don't matter. A lot of people with a lot of items, obviously, or code stones, <clears throat> doubloons. All right. Just click one, two, because I'm good like that. So now you just wait and go from there. Obviously, my pet's not 250. I can't show you guys the secret code place. I think it's like right here. Oh, yeah. Nope. Where is it? Hmm. I guess I'm not smart enough. But training school is right there, obviously. Once again, you would just kind of come here and be kind of confused. My on a course. Hit courses naturally. It tells you. So in case you're you miss the kind of thing, it's faster here once you get higher levels than to be doing doubloons. So like if you're go if it's cheaper and you have to go to work for seven hours, then use the blues when you come back. If you want a power level, then go back to code stones while you're at home or on the weekend or whatever you can or cannot afford. See, I'm already in a course here. What's it gonna say to me? Already training, okay? Now I'm gonna get smacked here. I haven't trained my pet in well over a year and a half. Can I get endurance? Probably not. Nope. It'll tell you the math here, okay? My pet's level. Tells you all that kind of stuff, so we'll have to get a level here, I'm guessing. Now it's going to want a whole bunch of code stones, because I'm level 60. So now i got to get four code stones. Three. The dream is to avoid the EO code stone, because it's by far the most expensive. Alright, I think I got all three. And now I just wait four hours. Pretty straightforward. Let's just take one more look at the uh, course length time here, just so we're a little more clear. Obviously, once again, after level 40, it's over. Like, yeah, this, you could technically play Daisuru at, at midnight to 1 a.m. You get a chance to lose levels, but quite hard. But as you can see, once you're at level 21, it's eight hours. And here to level 40, it's two code stones for three hours. So uh, like level 40, it's 10 hours here, cheaper, ideally. What does a 10 doubloon coin cost? Let's find out. Doubloons, obviously, if you guys weren't paying attention, they because of the secret cove, hidden cove thing, doubloons uh, basically tripled in price and maintained it. But as you can see, this bot is using old math numbers still. But yes, they're well over triple. This will be a bot. In case you missed that, I got a video talking about the balloon, the balloon mania, how I basically made like 50 million. But yes, this is just an account that's being botted. And Neopads just doesn't care. They want to say they had this many players and player base, so they don't know anything about it. I That's a complete side that I'm going to talk about it later, but I am so mad they changed that you can't do a four-month subscription anymore to Neopads. It... I'm going to talk about that later, different video with the news, but I'm so mad about that. But today we're talking about 
trading methods, all right? <clears throat> Obviously, Labre. Look at that very quickly. I want to do a Labre get at one point. I just got the full map as an Iron Man. But right here, possible. So you can get minus three, minus two, the hit points plus. It's all kind of mapped out here. Labrate, super strong for training your pet. You can use also, yeah. Like if you want to train your pet and you're serious about it, you need to be buying these cookies. Nothing to say about it. Uh, where are the fairy requests? Where did I go? Why is it showing them rewards? Oh my, one second. All right, here we go. Basically, the cookie, this cookie for the fairy quest guarantees you one quest a day here. You go to the fairy thing, say, I'll take my quest now. Obviously, hit points is useless. You don't want the air one. HP is good. Three strength or defense or movement speed. Obviously, you don't want defense. Strength, good. Level, depending on where you're at currently in the game. Can be good, kind of bad. You can abandon quest. Don't forget that. Three defense. Three HP, three strength. Three, so that's obviously amazing. People love the Fountain Fairy. Free recolor outside of like seven colors and like five exclusive colors and then all amazing space fairy plus five only for premium but different outcomes but yeah it's once again like this is crazy and the labray fortune cookie gives you between one to three extra zaps a day so if you roll high you can give your pet four zaps a day which is pretty crazy and it's nine days I think they're both nine days. Let me just click the other one quickly. Oh, I probably should have done that. Uh, go forward. So it's seven days from one to three if you use it. But because I don't care about my pet that much for battling, I don't do it. We're getting pretty long here. I'm gonna try and wrap it up for you. Kitchen quest, there's a 38% chance for a stat. So either a level, attack, defense, hit point. Once your levels start to take you 8, 12 hours and it's costing you like 6, six 7 code stones or it costs you the red ones, kitchen quests are super important part of your dailies. You can do 10 quests a day from the kitchen quest and those share those 10 with like Talia's and other stuff. I think even like the haunted wood check who gives you basically nothing. Stat boosting items. This is where the game gets kind of weird. <clears throat> There's items in the game that permanently buff your pet. So when you use this bubbly fungus, you can get a minus three to plus five. It's got, you get it from premium for fighting the fungus thing on easy. Pretty crazy item. If you want to try and boost up there, cause strength, dealing damage, Obviously, is the highest priority in your stats of your pet besides HP. This item, Jar Forest, 0 to 6 strength. So, once you get super high, or if you just want to get there super fast because you just want to, you know, flex a little bit, you can get there, okay? Defense boosters. Not quite as good as attack, but take a little peek here. We'll give you right down here one defense and one of these items. All right, scroll here. Increase defense by one to three, <clears throat> and we'll just increase your movement. But once again, we don't care about movement at all, so. All right, zero to one, that's not great. That's why it's so cheap. Once again, zero to two. Defense, one to three, and it's being inflated. Negs are just super cool. H boosters also super cool increase from one to three change movement from minus three to minus one once again there's no real reason not to do that snag is this is such an expensive item you're never gonna use it for that but this would have given you two to three 
don't use a snag on this right here 0 to 3 or 0 to 1 if you want to get there it's what you got to do sometimes all right 1 to 2 genie in a bottle very kind of niche items but it gives you levels <clears throat> I'm not sure if they mentioned here, but scratch cards, okay, they do, okay. So these scratch cards is a chance to get a level up. Okay. <clears throat> oh, these two and also Pika Plenty will also give you a chance, but they just cost way more. Stat increase your page. Oh, if you want to check every single item, like if, if you were on the game during this, you get like a one-time, if you... No, well, I can just be more specific. <clears throat> Pretty niche, but sometimes in the NC shop here, there'll be like a claim free prize. Yeah, here you go. Here's the. <clears throat> you can change your quest if you win certain things, but it'll say like. Sorry, my voice wants to go away for some reason. But it'll have like a thing here, like claim free prize. You just gotta click it. That's all you gotta do. All right. Ooh. Oh, that's my other thing. A word of warning. So, where do you want to begin? When you finish, when you finish a session, you'll get a super bonus, and when you do, your stats will go up two to five. But sometimes it can force you to different brackets, so be careful. All right, training ladder. I guess I probably should read this first. Getting your pet to level 10, then your HP, strength, and defense at 20, unless you're going to ignore defense because you just want to one-shot things, is your first goal. You can do this in any order. doesn't really matter. Next, train your pet to level 20. See, I would do 19 because if you're going to use the obelisk, you can get a level there. So I usually, like when myself, I'm always going to do like minus 2. So I'm going to go here to level like 8, and then eventually I'm going to work, try and get there, but sometimes you just get too many levels too quick and that way you can just you'll figure it out get to 20 and then get your hp strength to 40 all right level 20 you can get the different options here if you were paying super close attention you know that you can do a times three at the code stones but not the doubloons all right 30 get to 60 all right as a side note if you really want out of the battle dome is the i think the koi is gone Okay, just you can rush to 50 and 55 strength and just one shot them at easy. Not super complicated. All right, go to 40, get to 80. This is when things slow down. Before you train to level 41, get to 120 HP at code stones. Intermediate. Since your pet should have 120 HP, you'll be forced to get 60 level level 60 okay at which level 60 you can train your level to level 80 and increase your strength and defense to 180 after doing that train your hp to 200 train your pet to 100 stats to 200 finally hp 240 your average for code stone and your average regular five cost the same price because of this if you want to save a little bit Otherwise, trained level 120, 240, HP 360. The prices have changed a lot in the past since you wrote this guide. I, I'm going to assume if you're level 200, you've done the research yourself. But that's just a battle dome. I think I also want to go over other stuff here in a few, couple more videos. So I'm kind of curious. I don't really know more about it. But hopefully you learned a thing or two here. I'll also show off my pet quickly. Just because. So once my pet got strong enough, about a year and a half ago, to one shot Jets of Mace, I just didn't care. 177 strength, 89, 81, super genius. And as always, have a nice, good day.